welcome back to the class everyone today we are going to be doing our last prep video for one of the larger farms and we'll be finishing off things right with jedi knight luke so we did all the galactic legends we did general skywalker we did profundity we did executor and now we're finally on to giant luke and similar to general skywalker this is now a super convenient time both for me and for those who do not have him because as many of you know two of the really large and difficult requirements for giant luke being wampa and hoda they used to be really difficult to obtain being only obtainable with get one which was not necessarily a super scarce commodity but you couldn't really speed it up in any way you just had to wait months and months and months and months to be able to rack it up and while you can still do that that option is still available on top of that you can now spend your mark two energy or rather raid currency from the new raid or from heroic sith raid to be able to buy them as well not only is this method faster but it can also be used in conjunction with the old to really speed up the farm and it's really not any different from any other farm now where this used to be kind of a specific roadblock that was extremely challenging and one of the other reasons why this becomes more and more relevant now because jabba has been getting better and better in every facet of the game and giant luke is required for him so we really do need to take a deep look at this and again the whole point of this specific type of video is for us to look at this not only this character but all this character's requirements what is the best order to farm them in and what other characters can you fit into this that are actually worth gearing up before you even unlock giant luke to get the best bang for your buck out of your requirements because one of the things that cg doesn't do when they line up the requirements for a legendary or for galactic legend or whatever they're not trying to make specific teams they're just kind of throwing in random characters that are a either difficult to get or are lore accurate or for whatever other reason so we're going to try to spruce things up with some other characters and the way i have this set up is that we have these different tiers for every single type of character of which ones you want to go out to first we've explained this in other videos but basically what you're looking at here this isn't saying that 3PO is an S tier character and Wampa is an A tier character and it's done. The idea of what we're doing here is these are the characters you should be going after first. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into that. And this one, we don't do this very often, but I'm going to really recommend if you're starting on a farm for Giant Luke, just do the CLS team. It is already required to do 3PO, to do Commander Luke Skywalker, as well as Chewbacca. Like you have to do those, otherwise you don't get Giant Luke. There's no other like... There's no way around that. That being said, it is not required to relic Han or Nubaka. And while you don't really have to relic them, I would get them at least to gear 12 to be paired with the rest of this team. CLS is only needed at R3 for the event. Actually, everyone is only needed at R3 for the event. So you have an R3 3PO, R3 uh, CLS, R3 Chewbacca, and then adding two gear 12s to this really makes the team super great. And if you're going after either galactic legend that giant luke leads into whether it be jabba you will need han at r8 so that's pretty important and if you're going after jml you'll need nubaka at r5 so really this is just a great investment and if i'm being totally honest this team right here on a one-to-one -one comparison competes with just like a normal giant luke jedi team without adding in extra really strong teams like jedi master luke so it really is excusable to stop before you you know gear up and relic up rollo and captain han to really get kind of sidetracked with these two other characters and the reason why i want to do all five of them at the same time is just so you can get the entire team that's the goal here i thought about splitting them up because you know cls is technically more valuable than 3po and you know wampa is really one you want to get up right away but at the same time you really these need to be all at once i guess we could maybe swap the s tier and the a tier because the a tier is also really valuable but i think this is the best way to start it out just because this team is so high level and what it can beat and what it can do uh next up is going to be our a tier these characters are also really stinking good and to be fair both the s and the a tier typically are characters that should always be farmed regardless whether or not you're going after the character itself being jedi knight luke so first up wampa wampa has a ton of viability in the hoth territory about as well as gac for being totally honest most of his viability dips off after that he's not super great in territory wars 
And he's also not really that all that useful in Conquest. He will die to pretty much just about anything. But he's the good character overall for GAC when you apply his Omicron. It adds a huge amount of boost. Defense, max health, max protection, offense, 100% extra tenacity. And then also has irresistible uh, damage over time that come out every single time he is attacked. That really punishes a lot of the teams that just want to hit him and hit him and hit him and hit him. And with how survivable he is now, these bonuses... It makes it kind of a pain in the butt to kill him. It can actually start taking down pretty good mid-sized teams like General Grievous. They just can't make any headway on him, and he eventually just tears them apart. So, Wampa, excellent character. Really, the only thing that separates him from the CLS team in value is the fact that he really is pigeonholed into a few specific game modes where a CLS kind of rules in all of them. Next up is going to be Vader. Vader is really good in the early game. He dips off a little bit in the mid where to the point where he's going to need a little bit of help, typically on an Emperor Palpatine team, so that he can actually use his debuffs to his fullest effect, and then eventually he'll even, you know, graduate to a Lord Vader or an Aphra or a Starkiller team, which are all still really good. We're going to kind of put him here just because there isn't any other thing that he's tied to in the, as far as the requirements go. I'm still a big fan of Vader just because he can kind of just fit into whatever Sith or Empire team you're working on. Not to be confused with the Sith Empire team, he actually doesn't do super well there. But with any sp specifically Sith like uh, Treya or Emperor Palpatine, he'll fit well in there. Or even uh, em Empire, which I guess is Emperor Palpatine and Thrawn again. Or even under his own lead, he's not half bad and he's needed quite a bit at, again in Hoth territory battles. If you haven't already graduated from that, it is very nice to have him there. Relic 3 is a okay place to have him. I typically like him higher because he is an attacker and a lot of his damage does scale very well. That being said, Jedi Luke really shouldn't be put off by taking him to higher relics, so get him to R3 and call it good. Hoda is really excellent. He's going to be a very similar flavor though to Vader in the sense that there aren't enough other Jedi in the requirements. There's no other Jedi in Giant Luke's requirements. So we don't really have this way of building a team around him. Maybe you already have Jedi Knight Revan, or you have Qui-Gon Jinn, although even that synergy isn't super great. Or maybe you have Basila. I don't know. Hoda can really work in his way into a lot of different teams. I don't love him with Qui-Gon Jinn because it's not Galactic Republic, but it's still functional, I suppose. And he can just be used most places, actually even outside of Jedi. Most of his abilities are still good for most teams he can give health protection back to everyone this master's training buff wall these bonuses are doubled on jedi it's still 25 percent extra defense offense potency and tenacity there are some cool ways to work the health equalization is still here as well so it's overall a little bit plug and play although he does really want to be with jedi but at the end of the day jedi are not that hard to come by most people can get basil and grandmaster yoda pretty accessibly within the first year of playing the game Next up is going to be C tier, and apparently we entirely skip B tier. I'm not really going to question it because honestly, these characters just aren't super great. These are characters that you you don't really want them relicked up at all if they weren't required for Jedi Luke. These are totally skippable. That being said, they are required for not only Jedi Luke, but I believe Lando is also required for Jedi Master Luke. That's why he's R5 versus R3. So you do want to do all of them. You have to get them up there, save them for last. These are the ones that you plug away on. You can tell by my investment in mods and them how much I use them where I'm at. Just overall not super useful. And I will I will mention you can kind of put together a really crummy like Rolo led team with maybe some other two throwaway rebels. It's really not good though. It gets sold by a ton of stuff. Just not a great investment. Really, I mean Nest, Wampa, Savage, they'll all just tear it apart really stinking easily. That being said, and I'm not going to suggest you do this before Jedi Luke. So again, reviewing, do this team first, do these three next, do these three, unlock your Jedi Luke, gear him up, put him in a Jedi team to go around, you know, profit, all that good stuff. But I think it might be worth suggesting to some players, and this doesn't fit for me because I farmed Jedi Luke a long time ago, but for newer players, it really might be worth this investment right here. And explain a little bit what this is. Sana is a fairly new character. She is farmable right now. She is not accelerated, however, so maybe this will age better later on. But she will take the three characters you saw before, Lando, Rolo, and Captain Han, and together with Stormtrooper Han, actually make a decent kind of B-minus level team. It's not relevant for why, where I'm playing at, which is the reason why I have, what is this, Gear 9 on Stormtrooper Han. So it's, it, it's not super great, but if you're in a position where you're looking at like replacing a Phoenix or an Ewok, 
or some other super low level team that you still have sitting on your back wall in JC that someone always gets a 65 against, this actually might be worth getting into. Uh, Stormtrooper Han, you will already have seven stars because you have CLS, otherwise you wouldn't have been able to get Genet Luke. And then Sana, while this isn't like super relevant for everyone, she is eventually required for Afra, so you can have another requirement out of the way. And if you do that, really, the other three requirements for Afra are all very good. The droids go under Afra, and then Hondo just kind of goes anywhere and does whatever he wants in a very Hondo-like fashion. So might be excusable. Again, similar to the other characters we looked at with the CLS Rebel team with Han and Nubaka. You don't necessarily have to get them all the way up to Relics or like Relic 3 or something like that. Maybe Gear 12 is fine. Or maybe you don't want to get sidetracked with Sana on a Cantina note and go after a better team. That's up to you, but it was at least worth mentioning as to something you can do after the Giant Luke farm, maybe before fully rushing into the huge task that is Jabba and or Jedi Master Luke, or both. So that is going to be it for this one. Let me know if you guys want to see any more of these for the other legendaries. I feel like they're not as crucial because they're just not really long and drawn out farms. Whereas this one and the gas farm were like 10 different characters, a bunch of different teams. So there were definitely things that were worth looking at. But let me know in the comments. And as always, stay awesome.